we're just going to look at how we get to calculate the formal charge using this compound. So at this point, we already understand that the formal charge is very important when it comes to choosing the lowest energy Lewis structure and the most stable Lewis structures. In the cases where we've got two more than more than two structures available, okay? Because we understand that the one with lowest energy is the one with fewer or lower formal charges, and it's actually the most stable in existence. Okay. So how basically do we get to calculate the formal charge? So the formal charge formula is basically given as the number of valence electrons minus the lone pair electrons minus the bonds. Okay, so that's the full formula. Now, the simplest way of you remembering it is this. Formal charge is equal to valence electrons minus anything around it. That's the way I take it myself. It's very simple that way. Okay? So, we'll look at it in this way. Looking at the formula that we have on the bottom, it is the number of valence electrons. So, we'll start first of all by the sulfur. Or we'll go by the oxygen on the bottom. This oxygen there. So, how many valence electrons does oxygen have? So, oxygen basically has got valence electron that matches up with this group so all elements are like that on the periodic table so we have six now how many lone pair electrons there are four lone pair electrons these electrons that are not part of a bond formation so there are four and then how many bonds there are two bonds so in such a case we realize that the formal charge of our oxygen there is expected to be what is expected to be a zero okay that's the way you get to look at it. Now, instead of doing that, what you can basically do is look at the number of valence electrons and then just count everything around it. So count it as individual. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It will still be six, right? So it will still be a formal charge of a zero. So that will apply to everything else. So we know that all these have got six valence electrons. So we'll just be subtracting how many things are around it. Starting with oxygen on top. So it has got four lone pair electrons plus two bonds. So that makes it six. Six minus six, zero. The one on the right it has got six lone pair electrons with, with a single bond. So that makes it seven. Six minus seven is a negative one. And then the one on the right we've got six minus. So we've got six lone pair electrons plus a bond. So that also makes it ten negative one and then the sulfur the sulfur itself it has got how many bonds around it one two so it goes two double bonds that makes it four plus two six six minus six is zero since it's also from group six so so far what we are seeing is eh, the ones in the sides are negative ones the ones on on opposite so we've zero negative negative and a zero on the sulfur so there's no it's, it's not necessary for you to show the charge when it's basically all zeros okay so therefore from our calculations the net charge of the entire compound is going to be the additions of all the signs so therefore we'll put it in brackets <laughs> let me draw the brackets later okay so we have got two negatives, so it will give us a minus two. So two minus is the net charge of the entire compound. So that's why the formula is basically tend to be S or for two minus. Okay, so that's how we basically get to determine the formal charge in the simplest way possible. Okay, so in cases where you're having some challenges when it comes to understanding why sulfur exceeds uh, the octet, you can watch a video about that.